Today, we've got our first creature feature. A short and sweet little hidden gem starring Peter Weller called Of Unknown Origin. As silly as this movie can get, I actually truly admire the directing and the cinematography here, whereas without it, I don't know if this movie would work. Peter Weller also turns in an amazing performance that is way more pro than a movie like this required. But more on that later. Of Unknown Origin, yes, is a creature feature, but I wouldn't quite say it's a horror movie. I wouldn't really say it's scary. Rather, it's gross and it's creepy. Filmed in Montreal, Canada, standing in for New York, Of Unknown Origin is the story of Bart Hughes. Bart is in mergers and acquisitions, and Bart has to miss his family's ski trip in order to make a deadline at his job. <coughs> Good night. I turned into a pumpkin. A beautiful pumpkin. Oh, you're biased. <laughs> you're right, I am. <laughs> all right, Sharon, here, keep it on a 70, all right? Take care of your mom. Get over, darling. Have fun. Mm, I will. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Though Bart returns home every night to an empty house, something waits for him in the dark. Long story short, for 1983, of unknown origin is basically a modernized, urbanized retelling of the Moby Dick story. Moby Dick, the film and the book are even featured in the movie. Instead of one man's obsession to catch a whale, it's one man's obsession to catch a extra nasty rat. Conflict begins when Bart returns and his newly renovated home is messed all kinds of up. And who's behind it? You guessed, our ratty fiend. As Bart becomes increasingly obsessed with catching this ever elusive rat, he gets less and less sleep, resulting in him losing his grip on reality, and this is shown through jump scares and fever dreams. And many of these scenes lead to jump scares that are done the way jump scares are supposed to be done. Everything starts piling up and all of which affects his work, making the deadline, and nothing seems to help. If you like creature features that make you giggle, you'll really dig this one. It's not creature feature like gremlins, critters, or ghoulies, but rather it's a little more unique. At a merciful 1 hour and 28 minutes, it's exactly what you would expect from a fun, no harm, no foul, early 80s rat movie. There's not a lot of massive plot to break down here. It's basically a simple story of a man going mental trying to capture a dog-sized rat. My favorite part of the movie is how it's presented. By that, I mean how it's directed, the atmosphere, and the cinematography. My favorite in general is a scene where Bart hasn't slept throughout the night. And he's returning to work the next morning with a million thoughts on his mind. This is conveyed without a single line of expository dialogue, voiceover, or any other trope that a lesser director would have gone for. The extreme perspective that we see the rat starts to complement the odd perspective that we see Bart as he begins losing his grip on reality. 
there's a certain humor to the way that the rat is presented in secret that's just humorous to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I find these shots with the high contrast lighting and the extreme close-ups just gross and funny all at the same time. And let us not forget the birthday party. Happy birthday to you. For a movie about a giant rat, Bart is allowed to be human, he's allowed to be flawed, and he's played excellently by Peter Weller. The man is simply excellent at his craft and must possess a tremendous skill for improv. There's just these subtle nuances and ad-libs and small actions that just appear unscripted. He'll like do a little dance, make a little face, He'll like adjust somebody's clothes or fix their tie. It's just, it's unusual. Part of the human side of Bart's character is how he shows weakness and vulnerability trying to maintain his job and trying to maintain a relationship with his wife while she's far, far away on vacation. His wife being played by Shannon Tweed. <laughs> and let's talk about Shannon Tweed, shall we? If you watch this movie, I challenge you, challenge you to find one scene where she's not undressed, getting dressed, wet, or about to get wet. Bruh. Bart's obsession eventually leads him to the library for some research and some microfiche. He later shares his newfound enlightenment at a corporate dinner where he cuts through the superficial chatter to share nothing but blunt statistics and facts about rats. <laughs> In the 14th century, the rat carried the bubonic plague flea that killed one out of every three people from India to Iceland. <laughs> Over one-third the entire population of the civilized world destroyed by rats. Not bombs, not guns, but rats. You take your average rat, it can wriggle through a hole no bigger than a quarter, swim half a mile and tread water for three days. They can eat through lead and concrete with these teeth that are like chisels that exert an unbelievable 24,000 pounds per square inch per tooth. And they say now there's as many rats on this planet now as people. The scene is a great example of the appropriate use of exposition, adding a little weight and a little tension to the potential conflict of a giant rat lurking in Bart's home. After making a discovery, Bart realizes he can have his family return to this dream house turned hellhole He's confronted with the idea of leaving or taking a stance. The finale of unknown or the finale for of unknown origins is equal parts payoff for your patience and eighties romp. I won't spoil anything here, but I can almost compare Bart to a lighter version of Ash Williams from the evil dead transitioning into some of that bad. I don't really have anything bad to say about of unknown origins because it's technically very well made. And as the saying goes, it is what it is, it ain't what it ain't. And what it is, is pure entertainment. You're not gonna walk away enlightened or provoked or mind changed. You're simply either gonna enjoy a giant rat romp or you're not. If I had one little tiny nitpick, there's sort of this will they, won't they, while his wife is out of town subplot with one of Bart's co-workers that the film doesn't really commit to. But maybe that was the point. Final verdict of Unknown Origin is short, it's well directed, it's well paced, and it's impossible to not recommend. It's too harmless and entertaining of a hidden gem to pass up if you have a chance to watch it. Translation, you will never see this type of film again in the prequel, sequel, requel, reboot, shadow of its former self crap fest known as modern Hollywood. No sequel baiting, no franchise building, just a simple man versus beast story. Of unknown origin is an extinct brand of Hollywood. A refreshing creature feature that's not quite a well-known cult classic, nor has it been made internet popular by those out there thirsty for nostalgia. And that's it. That's my brief review 
for of unknown origin. The channel is Phil For Real. Show is Bootleg Theater. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm with you. <laughs> Why are you still doing here? Click another one already.